Hello everyone and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to be comparing drive speeds between the Pi 4 and the Pi 5. How much faster is the Pi 5 when it comes to I.O. speeds? First, let's take a look at the drives we're going to be testing with today. First, we have the SanDisk Edge. It's an OEM card, so you're not going to be finding it in stores. It's an A1 class card. It is the card that Raspberry Pi sent me with my Pi 5, so I'm including in the test. Next, we have the SanDisk Ultra. This is also an A1 rated card, so it's a pretty fair comparison with the SanDisk Edge. It's 32 gigabytes. It's a pretty inexpensive card. It's only around $10 in the US, 10 pounds in the UK, and below six euros in the EU. So very affordable and pretty decent performance. We're gonna be taking a look at the performance later on. Moving along, we have the SanDisk Ultra Fit USB 3 drive. This is not the fastest drive in the world. Uh, these USB drives usually handle sequential reads and writes pretty well. I uh, like, you know, saving photos or saving a video but they're not very good with random reads and writes, which is what you would use in the OS. Next, I've got the Kingston SSD. This is a low cost SSD, but you have to buy the USB cable to plug it into your Pi. Uh, I see a lot of people recommending this SSD online and on YouTube videos. It, it, it's pretty affordable and has decent performance. We're gonna be testing it. You can find it for around $25 in the US, 20 pounds in the UK. I couldn't find an affordable one in on Amazon.de, uh, so not sure what the deal is in the EU, and I'm, I don't know if they're available there. One thing to keep in mind is that the cost of the cable adds to the cost of the SSD. The cable is around like $15 in the US, so total cost would be around uh, $40 in the US for the SSD plus the cable. Finally, for this test, we have the Kyoxia NVMe M.2 SSD drive. I'm using an enclosure by Ugreen. Uh, the enclosure was around $20. Uh, these SSDs are pretty inexpensive right now, and they're much easier to find because the Steam Deck is using these 2230 drives. That's the form factor for these M.2 drives and it's a lot easier to find them in stock and a lot more manufacturers making this form factor. So we're gonna test all of these out. We're gonna see how fast they are. I used HD Parm and DD for sequential writes and reads, and I used FYO for random writes and reads. I did the test multiple times on each device and each drive, and the results were averaged together. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, which is the latest release, both on the Raspberry Pi 4 and on the Raspberry Pi 5. So let's take a look at the results. So I put together some charts from the test that I did. So first I have HD Parm, then DD, and FIO Sequential. So these are all sequential reads and writes. Uh, not a whole lot of surprises here. So the um, SSD and the NVMe drives on the Pi 5 are definitely a lot faster than on the Pi 4. Uh, some of the tests shows twice as fast. And if for HD Parm, the USB stick and the micro SD cards are also quite a bit faster than on a Pi 4. Uh, but then if you take a look at DD and the FIO sequential, only the USB fit uh, drive is a lot faster on the Pi 5 than on the Pi 4. So I guess the faster USB 3.0 speeds on the Pi 5 really making a difference here for the USB media. So moving on to the random writes and reads. So this would be the operations that OS would be making. Uh, the sequential is more for like reading large files or saving videos, things like that. Random is more for uh, OS operation. You can see on the Pi 5, still a lot faster than the Pi 4. Uh, not a whole lot faster for random writes for the micro SD media, but for the random reads, the micro SD media is definitely faster on the Pi 5. All right, so let's talk about boot times. Uh, the Pi 5 boots a lot faster than the Pi 4, uh, twice as fast really, in, so half the time. Uh, some of my tests uh, range from 16 seconds to 18, 19 seconds. Uh, 22 seconds is an outlier for the FIT USB drive. Uh, this is really not a high performing a USB drive, so I don't even know if I would recommend using this uh, for running an OS. And you can see here the times for the Pi 4, uh, they range from 33 to 38, 39 seconds, 
with the micro SD cards taking the longest and the NVMe and the SSD uh, being the shortest boot times. You can see the SSD actually ended up winning on the Pi 4, but it's just one second difference. So talking about Pi 5 sequential writes and reads, you can see the NVMe drive is definitely the winner, but it's only about 5% faster than the Kingston SSD. Same thing for the HD Parm and the DD test. A little bit faster on the DD test, but not that much faster. No surprises here. The USB uh, drive, the SanDisk Fit, is comparable to the micro SD cards on HD Parm. It's a little bit faster on DD. But um, yeah, just taking advantage of that USB 3.0 speeds. All right, moving on to the Pi 5 random writes and reads. You can see that the NVMe drive is a lot faster than the SSD for random writes. Not that much faster for random reads. So reading off of the SSD, pretty comparable to the NVMe. Although the NVMe is still faster, I'm not entirely sure what to make out of the results for the fit USB stick and the micro SD cards because, I, yeah, they're, they're supposed to be the same class of cards, but it looks like the Ultra is faster than the Edge for read speeds, uh, but not that much faster for the write speeds. All right, let's talk about boot times. Something a little bit surprising came up during the test that the boot times don't really vary. Uh, the only outlier is the SanDisk Fit USB that took 21 seconds to boot on the Pi 5, but everything else was 16, 17, 18 seconds. And a little bit of a surprise that the Kingston SSD uh, booted a second faster than the NVMe drive. I'm not entirely sure the speed of the drive really matters for how fast you're booting the system. One thing that I noticed though after running my Pi 5 on NVMe drive for a while, I installed some programs, you know, I was just using it as a desktop. The boot times definitely increased to more in line with like 20 seconds. I'm sure that would be true for the other methods also, so I'm sure like over a period of time uh, after using your micro SD card, the boot times would increase a little bit also, but just keep that in mind, it's booting in 16, 17 seconds, but it might not make a difference in the long run, the type of media that you use for your boot times. One thing that was interesting was testing the boot times with overclocking. So I set the clock speeds for the CPU to three gigahertz. It was not stable at all. It was crashing, it was locking up all the time, but I was still able to test the boot times and the boot times were exactly the same uh, with the CPU overclocked and no overclocking at all. The NVMe was still 17 seconds, SSD 16 seconds. So overclocking does not make a difference in your boot times on the Pi 5. So which one is the winner? I don't think there is a winner. If you're looking for something compact for a maker project, then the micro SD card makes a lot of sense. It's super compact, you can tuck it away or put it in the enclosure, and it just works. If you're using your Pi to stream media like a Plax server, then something like the NVMe or the SSD would make more sense because they're super fast and they would work really well in an environment like that. One thing to keep in mind though is that these NVMe enclosures, they don't have any mounting holes or hardware. So how do you secure these? Do you just use rubber bands, zip ties? On the other hand, the SSD, they come in a standard size and they have built-in screws, screw holes to mount to a case. So let me know in the comments below, which one are you planning on using with your Pi 5? Are you going to go for the fast SSD or NVMe? Or are you just going to go over the micro SD because it just works? I hope you found this video entertaining or useful with information. So let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below also. And I see you in the next video.